Hi, St. Tim's. Father Joe with you today to just offer an update on what is the plan for getting back to weekend masses at St. Tim's. So here's the uh, current situation. As many of you know, a lot of reporting done in the last week on the agreement reached between Minnesota's Catholic bishops and state health and government officials about reopening churches this weekend. Um, the bishops have also been equally clear that the decision to reopen is a decision that has to be made individually at each parish level. So it is incumbent upon us to decide when uh, to reopen. We are allowed to reopen by uh, archdiocesan standards only when we have put together uh, adequate safety protocols, and those protocols are based largely on uh, guidelines, directives, and recommendations from federal and state health authorities. So uh, we, number one, we will not be opening this weekend. We are not prepared to do that. Uh, we do have uh, what we're calling a preparedness team in place that is thinking through and trying to plan for how we can get back to having uh, a number of people in the worship space safely. Uh, the team is headed up by Bill Steffel. Many of you know Bill, who's our longtime director of liturgy at St. Tim's. He manages the worship space so well. He has a team of dedicated uh, volunteers from pastoral council elsewhere who are uh, helping him to sift through uh, the many and varied questions and scenarios that we have to think about. And also in establishing and making sure we have all the materials on hand that we need uh, to do this safely. That's not only material goods, but also human capital. I'm talking about uh, the number of volunteers that we will need to make sure people can enter and be in the building and leave the building safely. Um, it's, uh, it's going to require a different set of, uh, of volunteer uh, skills that uh, we're going to need to have a number of new people involved in and trained on uh, to do this well and to do it in a way that keeps everyone safe. So uh, that uh, raises the question, well, then what, what is the date? If we're not this weekend, when, when will we start? And, uh, you know, in extensive conversations with our pastoral council, I think the, uh, the theme that has <clears throat> emerged, excuse me, over and over again is caution. Uh, uh, we're not going to come back and, and be at church simply because we can. We're going to make sure that we're doing everything we can to be as safe as possible. So uh, we're hoping that that might be uh, sometime here in June, um, and we'll see. I can't make that promise to you, however, because the situation is, is rather fluid. And when I say that, what I'm talking about uh, specifically is we're also keeping an eye on the reality around us, uh, which is the growing rate of uh, coronavirus infections and uh, critical care hospitalizations that's happening in our metropolitan area and our local area of Anoka County. Uh, so we want to be attentive to that and uh, responsive uh, to that dynamic as it unfolds here. We're told by uh, state health officials they expect that we will reach a peak of infection activity perhaps sometime later in June or early into July. Uh, so we're interested to know uh, how that plays out uh, over the next couple of weeks. And uh, we want to make sure that whatever we're doing at St. Tim's isn't going to contribute uh, to an increase in that uh, spread, that peak spread of virus. Uh, so that's obviously part of the equation that is itself very fluid. Uh, so it leaves us in a situation where I can't really tell you, yeah, we're going to we're going to say this particular date, we're back at it. Uh, if that particular date rolls around and uh, we have a high number of people in critical care uh, hospitalization needs and uh, increasing numbers of uh, local infections, it might not be a great idea to come back on that particular weekend. Uh, so we are going to continue to assess and evaluate all of this information through our parish pastoral council, our wonderful group of uh, parish volunteers who have been so helpful uh, to me in uh, thinking through all of these issues. 
Our parish staff is uh, dedicated to making sure that we do things well and safely. Uh, so we will all be talking about these things in the coming weeks and figuring out when we can best accommodate uh, all of the pieces that need to be in place before we start having weekend masses. Now, I do want to say something. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that are really chomping at the bit, so to speak, want to come back to uh, uh, celebrate the Eucharist and participate in the Mass. And I hear you. I understand that is uh, a great need that all of us have uh, to share in the Eucharist. Uh, all of you have been doing really wonderfully well uh, in being at home and not being able to come to Mass. Uh, the unleashing of spiritual strength and energy that has resulted from this has been quite astonishing to me. And to hear some of the stories uh, and receive some of the uh, cards and letters and, and talking with some of you by phone and email about your experiences has been very uplifting to me because I realize now more than I did before all of this started, how deeply rooted we are in this reality that the church is not the building. And we've said that so many of, oftentimes in the past, you know, the church is not the building, it's the people, right? And uh, we kind of said that glibly and without really thinking through or appreciating the full implications of what that means. And I hope this experience may have been a learning experience for all of us. It certainly has been for me as I begin to realize how true that is and how deeply felt uh, this uh, spirit and uh, religiosity is in all of us, that it is not simply about coming together in the building once a week uh, to have mass, as critically important, as informative as that is. Uh, it is the reality that we carry Eucharist with us wherever we go and however we are uh, dealing with one another and relating to our world and the people around us, we are giving expression to the depth and the conviction of that faith. So we have the opportunity to continue to do that. And I just want to continue to encourage all of you uh, to share the Eucharist generously with yourselves and with one another to know that the Lord is always present to us uh, in those moments and uh, is in fact helping us get through this a very trying time together. So we'll continue to look forward to that time when we can come together to celebrate the Eucharist well and safely. And I will update you as frequently as I can as those plans are made afoot. Uh, maybe that will be sometime yet here in June. We'll see, uh, but we'll continue to offer updates as frequently as I can. If you have questions, concerns, or comments, feel free to let me know at the office. Uh, any needs in particular you might have about uh, a return to Mass, you might want to direct uh, those questions or needs to Bill Steffel and his team. Uh, they need to uh, be aware uh, of any particular things that are uh, questions that are floating around out there so we can try to deal with those before people start coming back into the building. So uh, with all of that, I just want to ask for your continued prayers and know that my thoughts and prayers are with all of you. Uh, as we celebrate this Pentecost weekend, unfortunately uh, not able to celebrate in the church, uh, but we are community united and bonded in the strength of the spirit. Uh, I pray that spirit be with all of you today. Settle your hearts and minds in the peace and knowledge of the Lord. And please pray for St. Tim's uh, and for our local community. So until next time, friends, God bless you all. And may the peace of the Lord be with you.